Hi, everybody. Welcome back uh, to Neverland and the Runaways. Um, this is an actual play, D&D 5th edition, set in Neverland. Uh, is official play test uh, with these lovely folks here who are helping me make sure that everything is in order before I make it public for you to have. Uh, so thank you to welcome to the party and thank you to everybody here. Um, I also want to thank the sponsors for welcome to the party, uh, which includes Tabletop Loot, who are the amazing dice sponsor for welcome to the party. Uh, they have um, a code right now. If you head on over to tabletoploot.com and use the code WTTP dice, you get 15% off your next purchase. Uh, also, uh, everybody's favorite, uh, lovable Maddie, the so chatty one who owns uh, so nerdware.com is an amazing merch shop, which is the sole provider of Welcome to the Party merch as well as Neverland merch. So if you head over to so nerdware.com and use the code welcome uh, at checkout, you get 10% off your next purchase there. Uh, and Welcome to the Party is proudly sponsored by Roll20, the virtual tabletop that runs straight out of a browser. You get everything you need to play with your friends, especially right now when we're all social distancing. Uh, so go get click to roll character sheets, built-in video and voice chat, and you can upload your own maps and tokens all with a free basic account. So if you sign up at roll20.net slash start slash WTTP, um, you can get all of that. And finally, Welcome to the Party is sponsored by Devin Rue, who has provided huge support to the whole community since its launch. And you can get some of the best cartographical content on the web by checking out rueink.com, R-U-E-I-N-K.com. Uh, of course, hang out with us in uh, on Patreon and support the channel, the people who support the channel, uh, and your generosity keeps us working on our mission to platform the incredible LGBTQ and BIM POC players and creators. So check us out at patreon.com slash welcome party RPG. And of course, come hang out in the awesome Discord as well. I uh, have to introduce these amazing people who are playing this with me and helping me out. Uh, let's start with uh, Kate and go around, tell me who you are and who you're playing. Everybody, my name's Kate, and I play the Tiefling College of Valor Bard, Aurelie, who is an adult. Yeah. <laughs> Morgan? It's an important distinction. Uh, yes, hello, yes. my name is Morgan. Um, I am playing the Dragonborn Bard Sorcerer Wizard Child. <laughs> What's his name? Uh, oh, of course, Riddance. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Kate. You're welcome. <laughs> Sarah? Hi, I'm Sarah. I am playing the uh, Onomancy, I think that's how you pronounce it, Wizard Tessa, who is technically an adult. Yeah, yeah. I'll go with that. I'd give her that distinction. Uh, yeah, and Russ. <laughs> Hi, I'm Russ, and I'm playing the newly named uh, Oath of the Redemption Paladin, Jehan. Uh, they, them pronouns, and they're an elf. And also a child. Uh, also a child, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and I'm Diana, Super Dylan. I am GMing this. I play everyone and no one. Uh, so uh, let's get started. So last session was pretty chaotic. Uh, the Lost Ones here, um, through some questionable means, uh, accidentally set off an ambush between... Uh, some of the scorpions and some of Pan and the Lost Ones, including Pan and Tinkerbell themselves. And they obtained Tinkerbell and convinced her to guide them safely to the previous Pan and have promised to let her go once they've obtained the contract that will help them undo the damage that's been done to Neverland. Before they depart, they had successfully gathered all the materials necessary to complete the ritual that Jehan, previously known to the group as Nuj, never got to complete back home. When they performed the ritual, uh, Jehan visited with their fathers and all the other elders of the village and performed the rites to learn their true name. 
Following that, Tinkerbell, as promised, did lead the Lost Ones through the planets and the stars to the world that the previous Pan supposedly resides upon, Earth. Which brings us uh, to the current state of affairs. Uh, the Lost Ones have landed in a garden uh, that looks typically uh, unoccupied. It looks pretty plain and they are there with Tinkerbell. And uh, what would you like to do? Um, so you said we're going into the hedge, right? Yeah, well, like that's the idea. Okay, uh, so we have to become small again? Ugh. Yeah, um, otherwise you won't fit. Um, okay, right. right. Oh, I guess I have to. I have to do it. I, I mean, I don't know how to make myself smaller. <sighs> Fine. Okay. Well, just, you know, whatever. <laughs> and <laughs> she blows some fairy dust into all your faces, kind of flying uh, past you all and um, kind of tickles. It's like, not as nice as when uh, the other Fae have, have dusted you. It's kind of an aggressive <laughs> puff in your face. Um, as the sneezes. <laughs> yeah. And you all, just as before, proportionately to your sizes now, uh, shrink down to a relative Tinkerbellish size. Um, she says, well, I don't know, keep up. We have to, uh, we have not a lot of time really um because pan will totally realize that i'm missing very soon I mean, he definitely knows you're missing i know but he's gonna realize that i'm not on neverland he probably oh. doesn't think you all are like you know with it enough to leave anyway uh the fairies here are gonna be pissed and they're gonna be pissed at me so um, we have to get the info from them, but you kind of have to not let them, you know, like kill me. We or promised like... our protection. Uh -huh. Okay. Cool, great. And she kind of leads you in through, uh, uh, in this garden, there's a little like old and kind of rusted metal gate um, that she you easily slip through the bars of. Um, she leads you in where it gets kind of full of bushes and thickly planted uh, flowers uh, to a, a point where it looks like there is almost a wall of hedge. Uh, very literally, uh, with a small little wooden gate that's just about your size, uh, a little bit bigger. It's proportionate to your size. No regular sized human could fit through here. Um, and she approaches it and goes, ah, well, shoot. Well, that's not going to work. I mean, it, it's a gate. Can't we just open it? And she kind of steps over to the side and goes like this and points and you see a, a metal padlock with a key in it and holding it is a tiny statue of a fairy. Um, just kind of like looking like he is actively turning a key in this lock, but it's all kind of uh, stone. Is the key also stone? Looks to be. Okay. What um, happened here? Oh, uh, well, I'm not really sure to be totally honest, uh, but that's a, a lock I uh, don't know how to open. Does 
it look like the can I roll investigation or something to try and figure out more about this? Like I don't know if it's like the fairy was breaking in or if this is actually just a regular statue. Um okay. Uh yeah, you can roll investigation to try to look at it a little bit closer and see. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> That's a five. <laughs> okay. Okay. Pretty. It's pretty. Okay. Yeah. Um she kind of scratches her head, flies up over the hedge. Says, no. No, that's not going to work. Shoot. We have to get in there. Well, why don't we ask it to open? Sure. Just ask things to do them and they do it. Uh, sure, you can try that. Okay. Um, and who's going to go up and ask the lock to open and just say, um, excuse me, lock, we are on very important official business, um, to try and save Neverland. Uh, could you please open so we may enter the hedge and find the original pan? Thank you. Um, for a second, like Tinkerbell, like wide eyed sort of looks at it, but it does not seem to react or do anything in any way. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would like everyone watching this to uh, make a perception check. Does that include me or no? It does, it is included. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I... No, but I have dice by me during a game of D&D. &D. It's good. <laughs> uh, 20, but not natural. Okay. 18. Natural 20, so 23. Ooh, excellent. So, and Morgan, what was yours? Mine was a five. Yeah. Okay, okay. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so Tessa and Jehan, as you're watching this uh, happen, you see that the lock itself does not open, the key does not turn, nothing moves. Um, but you see the slightest flinch almost seems fake on the face of this fairy statue. It just almost looks like for just a second, like it blinked. Did you see that, Jahan? Yeah. I think I'm asking the wrong person. Um, excuse me, Mr. Fairy or Mix Fairy or Miss Fairy. Uh, I can't, I don't know your pronouns, uh, but could you please open the gate? Uh, we are trying to save Neverland um, from the current pan who broke the contract or tricked the original pan. I'm kind of confused on it to be completely honest, um, but we're trying to save Neverland and it's kind of important so everyone can go home and make their own decisions and have their memories back and yes. Thank you for your time. <laughs> um, and this time, watching intently after what Jehan and, and Tessa had said, you all see it. Um, this flinch again, just for a second, that the statue just blinks. Um, but still, the lock does not open. Maybe there's a password. Maybe. Hmm. Riddance walks up to the statue and just goes like, believe. <laughs> the flinch is now accompanied by just a, the slightest shimmer in the stone wings. And then it's gone. It looks like it's reacting to, to that just slightly more. Oh, Riddance, come here. And I'm going to hold out my hand to Riddance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll and I'm going to grab Riddance's hand and I say, yeah. we have to say the things that we said before. Ready? Okay. I believe in fairies. I believe in fairies. <laughs> um, so Tinkerbell rolls her eyes uh, at that. But the shimmer in the wings lights up and spreads throughout the wings all along the silhouette of this fairy into the key that turns a bright 
finished gold uh, into the lock. And you kind of see this stone figure kind of <laughs> like completely collapse out of this frozen posture. I go, oh. wow. Uh, to who do I uh, owe thee my thanks? I think <laughs> Jehan and Riddens would probably both raise their hands. Yeah, I just like. Hi. Hi. Thank you, uh, young ones, for uh, that was quite uncomfortable. Yeah, I don't think being a statue would be fun because um, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be able to move or scratch your nose, and that would suck. No, no, that was uh, quite excruciating. Good point about the nose thing. And it kind of scratches. It says, uh, do you happen to know the gear? Uh, uh, do we? I don't know what the year is no. in this world. <laughs> You do not. None of you have okay. ever been to Earth. <laughs> you all know what year it is where you came from. Um, no, because this isn't my home. This is a place that I think was called Earth. Um, and I don't know what year it is here. Right. Um, well, that's terribly fascinating. Not from here then yeah um so i was kidnapped by the new pan and taken to a place called neverland and then i decided i didn't want to be there and i wanted he to stop you and pulls the key out of the lock flies up into the air and turns immediately what is she doing here oh well we made a contract deal with her that she's going to bring us to the original pan so we can find the contract and we can take it to the fairy queen and make sure it gets broken so that that way there's not a pan who's this current pan who broke Neverland. She's here to fix what was broken. This is actual face. <laughs> like just in complete shock and awe this you you all have been there to Neverland and some longer than others but yes her I was there for four days longer not I'm really not sure how long Yes, well, it's not quite simple how time works there, is it? Well, I'm afraid I don't know what the state of things are past the door here. Um, and I'm not sure how long ago it was that I was first stuck this way. Why were you stone? Is it because people stopped believing? Unfortunately, that is always a, a present risk to us. However, at this time, it was deliberate. Um, Someone did that to you? I suppose it had been to intentionally keep the gate closed, locked, so that no one could get in, or perhaps maybe that no one could get out. Not quite sure. Anyway, if she is in fact with you, you must be responsible for her, but I have to go in and see. The original pan? The original pan? What are you talking about? 
We're looking for the original Pam. Uh, well, I apologize. She's not behind this door. I look at Tinkerbell. I look at Tinkerbell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Uh, like, nothing's up. She's not behind this door, but I don't know where she is. I just know that she's like here somewhere generally. Oh, so we're here to get information on where the original pan is. Tinkerbell. Why did you make us small? Well, so that we could get in. What's behind this door? Like, it's the hedge. It's where, you know, the whole fairy court is. Tinkerbell, are you being a mean adult again where you lie? Is Tink- yeah, is Tinkerbell lying? You can oh, inside check. Yeah. Jehan is straight up just saying that. <laughs> oh, wow, that's an eight. Mm. Uh, uh, natural no, 20. I'm, not, I'm nice. not lying. I might not be right about everything. It's been a long time since I've been here. Okay. But that's what I remember, and that's our best bet. Okay. So then maybe we should just go in and see what's there. Uh, the gentleman fairy uh, turns the key. Uh, it takes a bit, uh, kind of pushing down on it, and it opens up. Um, and he opens the door and kind of flies inside. And I assume you all follow. Mm-hmm. Um, inside, it's kind of um, stunning. It's like it's like the smaller version of the hedge that you visited on Neverland, except it goes for what seems like miles. Um, You see these tiny little trees that are kind of growing out of the ground. You see uh, flowers that have been made into into little tents. You see uh, little knots in trees that uh, have doors on them. You see basically what looks like um, an entire city that appears to have been built into uh, into this garden. Um, but you don't see anybody you do see what looks like a a place where people lots of them could live what time of day was it when we landed i believe you landed at dusk okay and all the fairies in neverland they were kind of out at night and then went to sleep at dawn Hello? He kind of leaves the group going and doing a lap. Uh, You see him kind of looking in tiny little windows, looking under leaves um, and kind of just searching everywhere. I'll Join in the search. Okay. Um, what are the rest of you doing? I think Riddles oh. is just kind of like looking around, watching. He's not really sure what to do right now. Okay. Uh, so the hedge is alive, correct? In the sense yes. that it's like it's a living creature. Or yes. Like it's a tree. It's a it's a bush. Something like yes. that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jehan's gonna ask the hedge what happened here. Okay, how do you how do you do that? Um, I think Jehan would go to like an open like square or something, mm-hmm. and kind of focus the fairy dust and touch the ground and say, 
I know it might hurt, but where is everyone? What happened here? And like tap the fairy dust on the ground. Um, make me a roll with your your magic skill modifier. That is a, with my bonus, a 19. Very well. Um, you and only you um, kind of feel the earth where you, where you like touch that fairy dust to um, kind of like almost breathe like a little bit and you hear uh, just sort of like it's carried on the wind. Um, it says, those that are left are hiding. Okay. Um, Anuj stands up and says, excuse me. Hello? Hmm. And kind of sits down on the ground. Okay. Uh, Tessa and Arlie, what are you doing? Uh, just kind of looking around. Is there, I mean, is everything covered in dust? Does it look mm -hmm. clean? I mean, can we get a sense of how long people have been gone? Um, yeah, everything looks like maybe could have been up and running as a bustling town, a bustling little woodland town, uh, but bustling nonetheless, probably just today. It looks... Hmm. I'm keeping an eye on Tinkerbell. What is she doing? Tinkerbell um, looks tense. Uh, she looks like she is keeping her eye on the gentleman fairy that lets you in here. Um, What's he doing? Uh, he's searching, uh, okay. like knocking on doors, uh, peeking in windows, um, kind of picking things up, smelling them. Yeah, he's doing. Um, he's doing a lot of that. Riddance. Mm -hmm. Arlie, Tessa, come here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The hedge. I think I know what we have to do. What do we have to do? We have to do what we did before. Last time the fairies were hiding. We have to play another song. Okay. Anuj grabs their drum, which is just their shield. Yeah. Right upside down. <laughs> I traded my flute, so I guess I'll be singing. <laughs> Tessa's going to continue being the pyrotechnic team. <laughs> Riddance uh, props Sesbury up on his head and and just shouts like, we're ready with the horns. All right. <laughs> <laughs> As um, he is kind of uh, frantic, Tinkerbell tensed up, you all play a song. Give me performance roles and tell me, I don't, you don't have to perform it, but just show, tell me a little bit about what it sounds like. Uh, I think uh, it's like, you know that sound that like Celtic woman has, kind of light and airy and like, very fey ish mm -hmm. that's kind of what arlie's going for uh i got a 16 um anuj is going for like an anuj jahan is going for a deep sort of beat very like soft but also strong in the sense that it sort of vibrates and echoes out mm -hmm. um and it it's it's not like a bashing beat it is a slow sort of methodical beat got it i got a 23 for performance great uh, riddance uh had a 15 total 
And uh, <laughs> the sound that comes out of Sudsbury, the mini owl bear, <laughs> <laughs> is it's like a hooger. <laughs> It's like a fusion of the two sounds together. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a, a growly hoo. <laughs> trying desperately to match like the, 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 the speed and melody of Arlie. Um, as you all play this moshing of sounds that are actually sounding quite good uh, together. It sounds like um, almost like uh, these these noises create a, a, a sort of atmosphere together, less than they create music. It starts to create a feeling. Uh, and additionally, Emmy uh, starts to emit a sound. Um, you hear uh, in all your heads, very clearly, a sort of humming uh sound high pitched that kind of matches what you're doing um everybody please make me uh, a charisma saving throw Dude. <laughs> i have oh, an no. important question about emmy right now yes did emmy also shrink or because since we shrunk down to the size of fairies is emmy just now person size is now is emmy just a beholder now <laughs> Yeah. No, Emmy, Emmy has shrunk down with you. Emmy okay, was good. involved in the... <laughs> Just in making the sure. Can I use an inspiration? You may. <laughs> to re-roll a natural one? Oh, you <laughs> may. I do not have any inspiration points left, so I am stuck with that six. Okay. <laughs> Can I give you one of mine? You got a six. No. Okay. Okay. A six. <laughs> All right. What? Uh, what about Jahan? Twenty-three. And Tessa? Oh, that was a six. Yeah. Six. I got a twenty-five. Twenty-five. Okay. So Tessa and Riddance, <laughs> you love Emmy. You keep forgetting about Emmy, but you no, no, love again. them. You. They might be like your favorite pet that you've ever heard of like the coolest pet like you need to appreciate emmy more no um and uh <laughs> and jayhan uh and arlie you kind of feel this this humming sound being emitted by emmy and you can tell you're just like they're they're trying to cast a spell on us. <laughs> I'm going to very gently, while still singing, grab Emmy and just like pat her little head in between her eye stalks in a very calming, soothing motion, like shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Jahan's like Oh, Emmy's singing along too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm shaking my head like, no, bad. Emmy bad, sure bad. is. Uh, and with that, a few moments of this kind of combined sound plus this spell, um, you hear the sound of a rock kind of shifting. And you look over and this stone that's probably essentially a pebble uh, or like a big, you know, big rock is slowly being dragged across the ground uh, and is moving to the side. Uh, and you see some tiny little arms kind of start to crawl up out of there. Um, and immediately uh, the fairy that lets you in sees this and kind of flies over and starts hoisting uh, people out of there. Says, how did you know to do that? Cut off the music. <laughs> Tell Emmy to cut off the music. <laughs> bows. Uh, Jayan also bows and says, uh, well, I asked the hedge what happened here and the hedge told me that you were all hiding 
And the last time we met fairies who were hiding, we also played music and then they came and said hi. And then we went into the hedge and we spent time there. And then Riddance and I met our fairies. Um, and yeah. Oh. Oh. Tess and Arlie, what if your fairies are here? Oh. That you know is that not have them. considered that. I hadn't thought of that at all. Uh, huh. Am Rins I still charmed by Emmy? Um, yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you love Emmy. I'm going to hold up Emmy. I'm going to look at her. Be like, Emmy, Emmy darling, you just cast a spell and I need you to let it go, please. Emmy kind of turns to you, blinks with her one big eye uh, and kind of tilts to the side and does nothing. I'm sorry, we're, we're trying fairy stuff right now. Hi. Um, so uh, you <laughs> don't get a direct response uh, because it looks like he is really focused on getting everyone out and he pulls up one uh, woman in particular and says, uh, forgive me, please tell me that her majesty is here and is everyone here? Uh, and um, see this woman kind of take a bow uh, to him, hug him and say, not all of us, but her majesty is still here. And he kind of starts hoisting more and more people up and they all sort of fly about examining the place, not really paying much attention to you um, and kind of opening their old doors. You could see like uh, lighting them up with a little bit of this kind of magic as they kind of come back to life. Everything starts to look bright and open and full of light again. Uh, it's beginning to get dark and this place starts to light up with the fairies that have taken their places among the trees and are gathering in the center, all celebrating, kind of hugging each other uh, and uh, beginning to uh, rekindle the place. Oh, also the front door is open now. Yes, yes, that's, uh, that's how this, was possible. I, I'm. I apologize. I must thank you all again. Um, and he goes to to kind of not shake your hands, but grab them uh, at each one by one and kind of uh, express that gratitude. Um, uh, forgive me. Um, uh, it's been such a long time. Uh, and he takes off his little cap and says, uh, "Puck, at your service." Oh. <laughs> sorry. Is this the stone one or is this the first the one? That was... one. Okay, yes. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Hi, Puck. It's nice to meet you. Um, I do uh, want to warn you. They may notice her, and it may not go well. Um, but I, I will do my very best. You've done us a great deed today. Well, for the time being, she's with us and she is the reason we were able to assist you. She was the one who made us small. So any praise that is bestowed upon us needs to be bestowed upon her as well. She's under our protection. Understood. Puck, I have a question. I will do my best. Where is the original pan? Or who can we ask about the original pan? I, you would, of course, need to uh, direct that question to uh, 
Her Highness, Queen Mab. Okay. Can we go see her? I would let us um, get back to our, our home just for a little while. Okay. Uh, but please <gasps> stay. Arlie, you can get your tiara now. <laughs> that is very kind of you to say, Jehan. It's a little low on my list of priorities, but it is on the list, I promise. I mean, they said that we have to kind of hang out for a while so you can get your crown. It's very um, true. I, first, first, I need to work on Tessa and Riddance. Just like playing peekaboo with the <laughs> with Emmy. I'm... Each time that you pull your hands apart, Emmy spins in a quick little circle <laughs> with glee. I'm going to try and override Emmy's spell with my own enchantment. Uh, I'm going to cast friends first on Tessa. <laughs> so Tessa needs to make a charisma check. Oh, God. <laughs> my plus zero, just like straight up charisma. It's like it's plus zero That's either great. way. So <laughs> 10 excellent you fail you're now my friend and then i immediately break it and i'm hoping that'll snap you out of emmy's trance too i say it does yeah 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 i think that works hi you back hi first yeah. second yeah. oh man i love arlie and then you're, and then you're just like oh i do I mean, but well no. i mean yes <laughs> but <laughs> yeah and, and then i like turn and look at Emmy. Really? <laughs> I'm going to give Tessa a quick kiss on the forehead and then go over and do the same thing to Riddens. <laughs> Riddens just takes Tessa's place and is like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Immediately. Uh, charisma saving throw for Riddens. Right. Plus two. Well, two plus two is four. So. Nice. Also fails. So as All soon fails? as you uh, as soon as you fall under my spell, I break it. Okay. Does does Riddance understand that he was placed under uh, Arlie's spell? I would like Riddance to make an insight check. Okay. Uh, insight. Ten. Not quite. It does feel odd that you, you kind of are swapping your emotions so quickly, but you mm. can't tell exactly why. It's just like, you're just feeling very emotional today. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> it's been a day. It's yeah. Been a long day. Yeah. Uh, you have a lot of feelings. Um, uh, Puck uh, says, uh, please, um, if anyone questions you, you, you do tell them that uh, uh, that Puck uh, has given you graces. And um, I will attempt to arrange uh, a meeting with Her Highness as soon as possible. Can we also check if Arlie and Tessa's fairies are here? I believe um, that it will take no amount of convincing uh, to arrange quite a celebration for what you have done. And I believe that would be included in that. Okay, cool. Um, I want to look at Emmy and just kind of like wave Emmy over and just like hold Emmy in my arms as we're walking through here, if that's possible. Kind of like uh, holding a Pokemon <laughs> and like... <laughs> It's like holding a togepi, kind of. Yeah, yeah. You've got a jiggly puff in your arms. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You do notice um, some of the fae uh, as you're walking through stop and turn and come over and just like pinch Emmy's cheeks and they say, What a sweet thing. <laughs> Emmy. Pat her and they <laughs> her little smooches even. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's great her name is emmy mm -hmm. uh, their name is emmy um uh he's great we found him in neverland and we love her very much 
oh yes I can see why so cute so sweet and it kind of like as you walk in like people come up do the same thing kind of go back to what they were doing um and, and you take a nap <laughs> please I'm not tired you hear in your head <laughs> okay well try not to influence too many people okay do you realize what you're doing making friends <laughs> yes but that's there's a better way to make friends rather than casting friends how huh? well i'll tell you what if you close your eyes and at least pretend to be asleep for the next little while. I will go full depth conversation on this with you when we're done. How does that sound? She closes all her eyes, immediately flies into a tree, opens one eye, <laughs> and then continues to follow you as you walk around. Oh, damn it! Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you have played by so anyway, suddenly you have three children <laughs> yep four you're four. getting Sudsbury <laughs> oh god yeah. Sudsbury have four children I didn't sign up for this Sudsbury is the tiniest owl um, who is staying very diligently perched on riddance and looks to be keeping an eye on everything. Um, you uh, kind of walking around, you do see um, some of the Fae kind of opening up what look to be shops um, more than you saw at the last place. There are, seem to be uh, food, uh, there seems to be uh, jewelry and clothing and armor and weapons and uh, you see um, that are opening up and being kind of dusted off and uh, coming to life. You see homes being opened back up, filling with people, um, but the mass of folks are are definitely in this what looks to be a little square kind of in the center um uh where everybody seems to be gathering and celebrating and everything um where do you want to go uh, uh keeping in mind that you do have tinkerbell with you riddance just looks to tessa Hey. So are you excited? It, yeah, I'm a little nervous. What are we it's talking gonna, about? It's going to be so much fun. You're going to meet your fairy. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe she's here. Maybe. Well, mostly. Probably. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. He turns, <laughs> he turns to John and just goes, should I not have said anything? I don't no, know. Riddit, Riddit, it's fine. It's fine. I'm just, I'm, I'm a little, a little nervous. That's all. It's been a long day. I look at Riddit yeah. and I say, do you think Emmy has a fairy? <gasps> oh, God. You say no. I mean, if Emmy believes. <laughs> and then it turns to Puck and goes, Puck, does Emmy have a fairy here too? Um, well, uh, my, my dear, that, um, uh, I don't believe so. That's not quite what we were made for, but, um, oh. But I believe that uh, this lovely creature uh, could have anything, including a fairy, if, if uh, she so wanted. 
I look at Emmy. Stop. (laughs) (laughs) Emmy. Emmy. Mm-mm. <gasps> Emmy, are you Tessa's fairy? I mean, with her luck, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, what if Emmy's like, like a sketchy. super special fairy? Mm. That certainly is a special kind of fairy, then. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So we're just kind of walking through the sh- like through the hedge right now, right? Yeah, kind of wandering through, seeing it all kind of come back to life. Okay. Uh, I think at some point, Jahan's going to sort of like pull back from the rest of the group and try and talk to Tinkerbell for a moment. She looks nervous, but not quite as nervous. She doesn't seem as... Uh as afraid of you all as uh, she is of everyone else at this time. So, uh, Tinkerbell, if Mm -hmm. I may call you that, um, I have a question about the promises that you make. Uh, Sure, I'll answer uh, whatever your questions are, I guess. So people make promises with you but can you help two groups make promises to each other with your magic? Yeah, like hypothetically, um, fairies in general can do that. Again, not so much me. Like I said, just a tinker. You can't really do a lot of the cooler fairy stuff, you know. I think you're wrong. I think you're pretty cool. Just because your title's Tinkerbell doesn't mean that there's anything wrong. Um, well, no, there's nothing wrong with me. That's just like what I, it's like, it's where my skills are. I'm not very talented in ways of magic. It's just, I don't have all that much. I mean, you can always try. And I try. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. What's important is that you try again. Sure. Well, that's, you know, why I like Neverland. I'm kind of the shit there. Excuse me. I don't know what that word means, but okay. I'm kind of the coolest fairy there. Oh, I've got the best fairy skills in Neverland. Oh, okay. All right. Um, Yeah, that makes sense. Um, But yeah, you could always try. And from what I can tell, I don't think your titles are permanent. Um, well, I'm pretty sure that like if these folks get their way. I won't have one at all, but we'll, uh, we'll see. You could always just say, I'm sorry and try and do better in the future and really try and be better. Mm, What if I don't want to? Well, if you don't want to, then why would, if you don't want to be better, then why would people want to help you? Um, I think the point is that they wouldn't and, um, you know. How do you know that they wouldn't if you're not willing to try? Saying Look, I'm sorry is only the first step. Right. But like I kind of liked the way things were are over in Neverland right now. 
I'm doing this people. for you. But that's hurting people. I hear you. I do. But it wasn't hurting me. So. I mean, just because it's not hurting you doesn't mean that it's not important. The people who are trapped there, the fact that people actually die there now, it's not good. Yeah. And I look Tinkerbell right in the eyes and I say, do you really not care if other people get hurt? Oof. Um, I wouldn't say that I don't care. Just that it's not my priority. Why not? I had kind of a big question. I'm kind of looking out for one. That seems sad. Maybe it is. In the sense of it's probably really lonely to live like that. To only look out for yourself and not look out for anyone else. I mean, I've only been here four days and I've made so many friends. I'm friends with these people and I point at the group. I'm friends with all these fairies. I'm friends with the scorpions. I'm friends with the mollusk. I'm friends with the mothers. I'm friends with the, well, kind of not friends with the mermaids. The mermaids are kind of mean, but I am friends with Emmy also. And I care about them and I want them to be okay. And even though I'm not the best friends with the other lost ones, I still think of them as people who deserve to have good things in their lives and deserve to feel good and happy and not get hurt. And even the pirates, I've never met them before, but they were there by accident. And from what I've heard, they're all dead, technically, um, but they shouldn't be because that's sad. Right. Well... And you Are can you see what? Are you lonely? She looks a little gutted and just kind of recoils just a little bit and says, um, how could I possibly be lonely? I half the lost ones and pan we have so many of us all the time yeah. there's so many of you but do any of them really know you besides pan and does pan really talk to you besides kind of using you it sounds lonely but it's okay if everything works out and we convince everyone to be cool and not hurt you then you can be my friend i want you to i want you to just roll persuasion just so i could see because sure. i feel like this could be taken by her one of two ways non-natural 20. Right. she kind of looks like again a little a little taken aback a little deflated um on her entire face and her body language kind of sunken uh, but what she says out loud is like whatever I whatever you don't understand um, and she kind of will fly to the other side of the group and you can see that she no longer looks like tensely afraid of her surroundings, but more like she's just stuck in a thought 
thinking. I think Jehan's a little sad that like Tinkerbell just like left the conversation. Um, but they're kind of just like, okay, all right. And then just join the rest of the group. Okay. Everyone else, what are you doing? Trying to teach Emmy that making friends is not the same as casting friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what riddance, what are you up to? Um really intently listening on the conversation about how casting friends is different than making friends. Oh, okay. Are you like taking notes? <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> uh, just like it's, it's a very important conversation to him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I love that. And then uh, Tessa, what are you up to? Um, Tessa is straying a little bit from the group, not like fully away, but just kind of straying and wandering a little lost in thoughts about, you know, Ren and saying like, what if your fairies here and all of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pretend doing the thing like where you're like, kind of like just you're like looking at all the stuff that's for sale, but you're not really paying attention to any of it. Right. Right. Uh, when you're too hungry to look at the menu and you just like see yeah. it in of words. Yeah. Uh, just words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so Arlie, you kind of have this discussion. Oh, what do you try to say to Emmy right now? Uh, okay, Emmy. So to reiterate, the way to make friends and not cast friends is to show concern for them, show them affection, the way that we treat you. We talk to you, we check in on you. And if you push boundaries, we make sure that we, that we restate them. It's a give and take. It's not just a take. I don't know how to do that. Well, that's why I'm telling you all this, so you can learn. Okay. Uh, Riddance, the conversation you're hearing is just what Arlie is saying. You don't right. hear any responses. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> we do hear what Arlie says out loud. And from here, you're walking around, you see that the uh, city starts to go into what looks like a, a typically functioning day again. Uh, it's now dark. It is now brightly lit in here with the twinkling of both the fairies themselves, lights all over. Uh, there are lightning bugs kind of uh, flying all through the top of the hedge itself. Um, and, uh, something interesting, you can see, um, that a very, very elegant throne, uh, has started to be decorated. Um, some fairies keep coming and putting flowers, uh, on it, uh, little trinkets on it, things like that, um, kind of at the head of this little, uh, center square. Um, up on a little mound of dirt. Um, Puck uh, says, um, well, if you, well, excuse me, I have a very uh, uh, bit of a frightening task that I must uh, accomplish uh, really quickly. And uh, I will try to get my way back to you as soon as possible again. Please, anybody who questions you or uh, her, you tell them that you're with me. We will. I Thank will you. Explain what you've done for us. It's appreciated. Oh God! Did we ever introduce ourselves to Puck? No. Um, <laughs> I I do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> lovely, well named. You all are. Um, I do hope that your remaining fairies are here. Uh, it seems we haven't lost many. So that should Good be here. Yes. Uh, wish me luck, if you would. <laughs> the best of luck. 
that thank is lots of luck Puck. good luck <laughs> good luck thank Puck. you uh and he kind of like wipes his forehead and <laughs> flits away uh back towards the gate um and uh what would you like to do it looks like everything is open and running some people are starting to celebrate it it appears uh people mm -hmm. are have moved on from the hugging and sobbing to the dancing and the drinking and the music uh part of the relief is that there is more fey champagne <laughs> There seems to be an abundance of it. <laughs> we get Tessa back will... wine mom Tessa. Yeah, yeah, you guys get back wine mom Tessa. Wine um, mom Tessa. Uh, she's just gonna take a, a glass, just not. I mean, not aiming for tanked kind of situation. Just like sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, right now you can see that uh, people seem to be very eager to um to kind of ha get everyone everything that they need um getting drinks and food for everyone uh you see some food go by on a on a little cart like a little silver cart um and drinks and hot cocoa and everything um and you notice that the throne is now occupied by a older looking bay woman uh whose dress is a big giant poof just big whole poof it's uh um she's got little poofy arm things it's tight on the waist and then a big poofy skirt all with gold and red threads uh that seem to sparkle uh and she uh is adorned with a crown of leaves that are um, uh, down around her head. I mean, I guess that's Queen Mab. Mm-hmm. Um, Gonna look down at my clothes. Yeah. Maybe we uh, should get new clothes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, prestigitation also... isn't gonna fix this. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can also change into my new clothes that I bought last time. Oh, right. That sounds good. Yeah. The rest of us need to go shopping, I think. Okay. Real quick. Um, so let's go shopping. Um, and we'll get new clothes. And we'll also get Aurelie's tiara. Um, and uh, Riddance, is there anything you want to get besides new clothes? Or you can keep your clothes. Your clothes actually look really nice. I don't have anything to trade, apparently. The Riddance just kind of like backs up a little bit. Wow. <laughs> Oof. Uh, here, Riddance, let's try this. And I will actually uh, pull out uh, an amulet of Helm that I have that my mother gave me. Mm. And I will give it to Riddance. Be like, this, this served me well for many years. I don't think I need it anymore. You can do with it what, however and whatever you want. How does that what? sound? Yeah. What? <laughs> and Riddance is just like vibrating with like, <laughs> like he's he's been given real money for the first time. <laughs> like, for real and for true? Yeah, for real and for true. <laughs> I promise. Wow. And then he just like runs in and tries to give Arlie a big hug. Oh yeah, I give him a big hug back. I'll ruffle his little frill like I do. What should I get? I could get all the things. And he just like starts running around. <laughs> Trips starts flying. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, you run. There's like a little incline that brings you to a sort of uh, elevation in the in the ground. That's like a wall of this hedge that's been carved out, and there seem to be lots of shops and stores and and carts that are selling things um uh here and um there's everything to pick from uh jewelry knickknacks uh armorers uh swordsmen there are um 
cl fine clothing stores and as well as like you see you know pots and pans out you see uh every day tools and th things like that as well all all kind of for sale in this market Rid riddance um takes like a look in like every direction and then just like thinks really hard for a minute and then runs to like the child the... leash i'll follow but child leash <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then runs runs like with the amulet in his hand he's just like too inspired not to trade it for something that looks kind of like this he was looking for like the accessory section uh yeah, sure sure yeah. there is what looks to be a jeweler with fine things but there's not just jewelry here it looks like they have things like scepters and wands and uh staves and things like that as mm -hmm. well um bags even um it looks to be i uh, he uh he like takes his look around and um sees the selection of like wands on the wall and then he pulls out his <laughs> his his mace rattle <laughs> that he's had since day one <laughs> and he looks at it and then he looks at the the seller and goes, hi, um, I'm too old for this. Do you have something a little more grown up? The seller looks so confused. <laughs> As, uh, <laughs> well, I, I, I don't believe we've met, uh, oh. but. Uh, I, uh, pardon me. My name is Riddance. Um, I am, well, I, I mean, it's complicated. I was the greeter from the Department of Neverland Maturity. That was kind of my thing. Um, a lot's happened since then, but my name is Riddance. It's nice to greet you. And I, I have this too. And it puts the um, amulet beside the, the, the rallet mat, the, the rattle. Rallet mat. Mallet, the rallet <laughs> mat. The, the mallet rattle. <laughs> And pops them down on the on the shelf. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, they kind of look at you. Um, uh, this fairy looks to be uh, kind of on the younger side. Um, very fashionably dressed. Very elegantly dressed. A uh, little um, uh, vest that they have on um, adorned with some jewels. They have very elaborate eye makeup on as well. Um, and they kind of give you a little, they lean down uh, a little to be on your level, take a knee and say, you know, I do believe you have grown out this uh, fine <laughs> instrument. Um, what is it used for? Um. Mostly for comfort. <laughs> All right. Well, what would you like to use it for? I should um, have said. I need something that helps me focus my imagination. Of course. Yes. Well, one does. I will. Um, I will do that um, for you uh, in exchange for that uh, item there. Well, I have both. I mean, I can throw them in together if it makes it extra special. Oh, interesting. Well, well let, me, let me ask you, what do you like? What am I like? What do you like? Oh, what do I like? I mean, because mm. I'm like pretty awesome. I <laughs> but... agree, I agree. But this rattle here, it's, you're right, it's not, quite you anymore yeah is it? no not really what do you like now well i mean i i really like to imaginate and the thing is is that sometimes when i imaginate things kind of just happen and i don't mean it and i what i want is to be able to like focus and go i wish this was real in real life and then do that mm as strong as I can. Yes, 
you imagine it and you make it so. Yes. Is that right? That's what I do. Well, I think I have, I think I have an idea of what to do for you. Um, you give me a moment. Uh, in the meantime, anyone else uh, that I could assist, anyone looking for a trade, uh, mostly uh, jewels and accessories here, but I do dabble in a foci or two. Uh, Jehan's actually going to take a moment and kind of go over to Tessa uh, before doing shopping stuff and just be like, Tessa, mm -hmm. um, I need to say this because I don't think Riddance knows this yet or has thought about this yet. You should probably get things to protect yourself because I don't think that Pan is going to give up. No, Pan is definitely not going to give up. And there's one other thing that I'm going to have to mm -hmm. talk with you and Aurelie later about, but if something happens to me and I can't go home, when this is done, can you take the bowl back to my parents? She's caught off guard by that, not expecting that to come out of Jahan's mouth. And takes a moment you'll be the one to take it back to your people and I'll make sure it gets there with you no I need you to promise just I in promise. case okay. I, I won't need to use it you won't need that promise but I make it okay I'm gonna go get some stuff uh, I'll be back what about Arlie Ah, uh, well, I, I'm trying to think of the things that I haven't traded away and it's like half yeah. of my inventory is gone now. Tessa needs some better clothes for sure. So <laughs> does Arlie. All right. This does not look like the, the, the place for that. Yeah. yeah. All Ooh. right. Well, if no one else uh, needs my fine skills, I welcome you young men to uh, be my first customer after a very long hiatus. I am thrilled to serve you uh, and kind of ducks behind a little um, wooden counter that he lifts up and comes back uh, around and it starts digging through some things kind of, sorry, it's all been packed away for quite a while. Um, but I do have something for you and kind of pulls out uh, and examines it and uh, kind of places it in his hand. It looks to be a, with a kind of gold uh, and emerald swirling shape to the handle um, with these long uh, brown bristles. This looks to be a very large and ornate paintbrush. And he hands it to Riddance. I mean, this is pretty cool. Um, this is you. Give that a try. Um, focus on it, make it yours. And the next time you want to imagine and make it happen, uh, be like you paint it into existence, right into the world. That sounds amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> Very well. Um, how about I take that and they point at the amulet. Mm -hmm. You keep this rattle as a bit of your past. I think it's always nice. Okay, if you if you say so, thank you so much. 
You're welcome. And he takes takes him. He runs away. Excellent. Now run along. <laughs> And uh, do tell your friends that I have fine things. Oh, I will, for sure. Absolutely. It just runs away. <laughs> okay. So now um, I believe we're going to take a break in a minute, uh, but let's establish where everyone else is going to. Uh, and, uh, uh, let's see. Orly and Tessa both want to get something finer to wear. Mm -hmm. I believe. Yep. And Jehan is looking for things to protect themselves. Yes. Uh, so, yes. specifically going to the armor here also. Uh, excellent. So, um, <laughs> uh, before we go to the break, I just want to um, establish everyone's going to these places. Uh, we will come back in a few minutes, uh, probably like 10, 15 minutes. Um, and, and, uh, we want to thank our Patreon, uh, sponsors for supporting us. Anybody who's watching all the players, everybody's the best, um, so much the best. And I think hopefully we might be good to take a break. We are good. Okay. Wonderful. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today. If you get a second during break, you should check out one of our amazing sponsors. We're now proudly sponsored by Roll20, the best virtual tabletop for all your role-playing needs. Over 4 million people use Roll20's virtual tabletop to power their favorite games. And with more modules than you can shake a stick at on their new revamped storefront, you'll definitely find something for your group to enjoy. Sign up today by clicking the link below or heading to roll20.net front slash start front slash WTTP. Tabletop Loot is an amazing place to get your dice, dice bags, dice boxes, and more. And now you can get 15% off your purchase at tabletoploot.com by using the code WTTPDICE at checkout. Tabletop Loot. Your party starts here. While you're at it, check out our so awesome merch store, So Nerdware. So Nerdware is the place to find all your Welcome to the Party merch and other amazing stuff too. Head on over to SoNerdware.com and use the code WELCOME at checkout to get 10% off your next purchase. So Nerdware, it's what the nerds wear. Devin Rue, the amazing mistress of maps, has kindly supported the channel since the beginning and provides graphics for many of our streams. Head on over to RueInc.com to check out some of the best fantasy cartography on the web. Our Patreon supports the creators and producers of the channel by providing Roll20 subscriptions, cost coverage for video hosting, and more. If you want to support the channel while getting podcasts a week early, gaming articles that are published on Patreon first, a shout-out during our break, and more, head on over to patreon.com front slash welcomepartyrpg and throw us a buck or five. And last, but certainly not least, help out the party. Subs and bits not only support the stream, but also, every 500 bits or a tier 1 sub gives a player or DM of your choice a reroll or system equivalent. And every 1000 bits or tier 2 sub gives a player or DM of your choice a crit or system equivalent. Thanks again for hanging out with us today. The game will be back in just a few minutes. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. The sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and the candy. So let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat.
Hello, welcome back everybody. Uh, we are um, no longer in Neverland. Uh, we are on earth in the hedge um, with the fairy court that we have just sort of freed uh, unintentionally or intentionally um, from their hiding. 
uh, the lost ones are on a bit of a shopping spree right now while uh, they figure out what to do next on this uh, journey to discover the previous pan. At this point, Riddens had just purchased a wand, which is actually a uh, very ornate, elaborate paintbrush. Uh, and the rest were headed in some different directions in search of other important items. Uh, let's start with the ladies who are looking for some fine clothing. Mm -hmm. uh, you wander about and you do see um, that there are several uh, shops selling clothing. Um, some you look utilitarian, some look like uniforms, things like that, everyday clothes. But there is one shop in particular that does look like that it is selling um, fancy, ornate clothing, high-end clothing. <clears throat> is that what you're looking for? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. I want a fancy dress. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there is a... Uh, fellow who looks to be um, taking measurements and uh, inspecting items in this uh, shop as everything has kind of been sitting out for a while. <laughs> and uh, you come over to uh, him and he takes a bow. Uh, what May I offer you ladies? Uh, uh. <laughs> well, I believe we will be speaking with Queen Mab at some point. Oh. And we would like to look respectable. <laughs> Not like this. <laughs> no. No, no. No, no, no. Uh, won't be happening, not on my watch, uh, especially not now. Uh, what, what did you have in mind? Uh, Tessa's like spent her entire life basically in super basic utilitarian clothing without a lot of time to like wear pretty stuff. So she's seen it all from a distance before, but it's a little bit like, deer in headlights look finally seeing it all up close of like oh oh okay i i'm possibly wearing that in a moment so she's very overwhelmed and does not know even really what words to be using right now and kind of mm. looks helplessly at arlie <laughs> for that <laughs> right then uh what about you miss uh and uh this is where my Kate's background in working in the wedding industry is going to come into play. Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to help Tessa first. Uh, well, uh, from my from Tessa, um, <laughs> she she has really beautiful red hair, and so I was thinking something maybe in a jewel tone, um, maybe a green or a blue or like a deep purple. I like green. Green is good. Hmm. Um, and, and maybe like a, a heftier fabric, um, maybe a taffeta. I was thinking more of a brocade or a velvet. Um, and then for me, uh, I'm actually gonna open up my bag and pull out. Uh, so I, I grew up in a temple and my mom liked to wear dresses a lot, but they were always like a, in pastels. And so that's kind of what I grew up wearing. Um, and I do have as part of my, uh, as part of my being a bard, I do have like a costume sort of clothing, but it's this pastel kind of like, um, high neckline, just very white kind of organza ish, uh, very flowy dress that I use typically when I was in the temple. And I was like, this has served me well over the years, but I think I want something a little more mature and maybe in a gold. All right. Uh, I can work with that. Uh, and uh, it kind of turns his gaze to riddance and says, 
You look well dressed. Just adjusts his scarf. Mm-hmm. Thank I think you. I think you're in in good condition. <laughs> uh, we'll focus on you two at this time. Uh, all right. Well, what would you be paying with? I will uh, hand over the the white dress that I have not worn since since we got here and it is in very good condition. Hmm. Um, I have a slingshot. <laughs> <laughs> like that, I, I have a slingshot. I, I don't I have no recollection of the fact that I have a staff. Like <laughs> but it's in my inventory. So that's really all I got. And then some like Oh wait, no, I I still have two shells from Neverland. I'll pull one of those out. Mm. <laughs> Rather than like slingshot for dress. Keep the slingshot. Uh please. Uh, but I will <laughs> take this shell. Quite nice, in fact. Uh thank you. And kind of puts it right into his chest pocket. Um it takes the dress and you see him kind of flick it and it kind of vanishes. Um, and says, that'll do. Very good. Uh, let's see what we can do. Will you turn for me? And he points at Tessa. She does very awkwardly. <laughs> like every scene in every movie where like cliche wise the tomboy gets put in a dress like she's just like I don't know what to do right now like how do hands work and turns around perfect perfect and he has you stop and he kind of sits at a little sewing machine flicks his tail coat out uh to sit at the sewing machine starts pedaling uh while kind of looking at you and a uh, as you're standing there you kind of stop and as he is pedaling on the sewing machine a fabric starts to kind of climb its way over you it is um in a deep uh, deep shimmering emerald color mixed with a bit of gold, uh, a thick um, uh, kind of a crushed velvet uh, fabric that comes across and has a shimmer to it as it kind of forms its way over over you uh, as you stand there. And he keeps pedaling away until the last frill of the dress kind of hits the ground um, and a little gold chain kind of like rests right around the waist. This is really pretty. It's so pretty. Yes, it is. <laughs> and she, like, so are you. Tries to like brush away some like dirt that she's probably got on the forehead. <laughs> uh, and Ew. you next, um, And he kind of does the same thing, tapping on the sewing machine. Um, And it looks like the dress you gave him, but new and more, uh, it's, it's actually less conservative, doesn't come quite up as high on the, on the neck, a little bit more of like a heart shape around you, uh, around your chest and down um, just below your knees and has a lot of uh, slink. When you turn it, it does the swirl. Uh. Yes, it does some serious heart eyes (laughs) for sure. Uh, And he gives you both a look over, says yes. I've done such a good job. Uh, thank you. Thank you for 
uh, coming to visit Thank my you. fine establishment. Thank you very much. Mm. Best of luck meeting with uh, the queen. Any tips? Um, watch your words. <laughs> Be careful with them. And you see him kind of tilt his head and catches the sight of your companion. Yeah, and she's there. Have a good explanation for her. That's all I'll say. Okay. Uh, and what's Jehan doing at this time? Uh, Jehan had, had gone to look for something more fortified. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so Jehan's headed over to the armory uh, mm -hmm. and is looking to trade in their splintered bark shield or possibly mm -hmm. their armor. Um, uh, yeah, so they would walk into the store, uh, kind of just like holding their armor that they have that's made from like patchwork pieces of wood and holding their shield. Absolutely. Um, the armor is kind of hammering away, uh, at something looks like fixing some dents and some things that have been out for a while. Uh, question, uh, the, uh, the hammer that they're using and also the person. The hammer does look similar to the hammer from before. Yes. And the person, is it possible that they might be related to the other armorer? Because Jehan would know that these sort of trades are passed down family lines. You do. If you are looking for it, uh, they don't look identical in any sense of the word. Uh, but, but this... Uh, this woman here does have some features that you would say, yeah, sure, could could be closer related than to anyone else here. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, Jehan would approach and say, um, excuse me? Yeah? Uh, I'd like to make some trades, possibly. Uh, sure, what do you... What are you trading and what do you want? Um, so I have this and they place the shield up and this place the armor up and say, I would like to get some upgrades. Um, I know that my stuff isn't very great. Um, I can try and use some magic to get them to do things. Um, that's what I did for this. And they would hold up the staff. Ah, uh, sure. Yeah, that, that's... This is well and fine. You just want upgrades to them? Uh, well, not. Well, yes, if you could upgrade those, that would be great. Um, but if you have other pieces that would work better, that would be good too. Um, I think that there's going to be a big fight coming soon. And I need to be ready to protect not only myself, but the people I care about and any innocents who are there. That's a tall order for, uh, I hope you're not in that alone. No, I have friends there. Um, but the person we're going up against is very powerful. And from what I know, controls the area where we're going to be meeting them. And it's kind of scary. Last time we were there, they summoned or created a lightning storm. Um, Who is this they? Pan. The new one, the one that she, broke Neverland. She kind of crosses her arms, sits back, and says, You bit young to be fighting the most powerful thing you or I have ever seen. I know, but no one else is solving the problem. Um, so we've gotten this far already. Uh, I was on Neverland for four days. We met all the different groups and made friends. And so we have allies 
and we found the fairies who were hiding and i found my fairy and then we caught tinkerbell who was trying who was with pan so we've already technically fought pan once and we escaped and made it to here and now we need to find the original pan and get the original contract so we can figure out what needs to be done to get a new pan sorry that was uh, all. Uh, all right all right all right i i'll, I'll you're going to need something <sighs> way way better uh okay i can well, still it's... try and enchant these things though if you'd like me to uh last time i made my club remember that it used to be part of a tree that's a smart trick good job uh i'm getting pretty good with fairy magic actually so far i've used it to do that i've made a flute sing the songs of forest i've protected us from the lightning storm using a leaf and i found out that you were all hiding by asking the hedge oh that's you okay yeah well Look, make these as 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 valuable as you can as you can kick it off, and I I I think I got something for you, okay. especially if you're fighting, Pan. Okay. Uh, and she's gonna kind of turn and 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 take what she was hammering out off, and she's gonna pull something else out uh, that looks like a giant full oyster shell. Um, Interesting. and starts to uh, polish it. Um, and uh, what do you do to your old armor? And uh, So Jehan's actually going to start with the shield. Okay. Um, and the shield is made of like multiple pieces of wood that have been kind of haphazardly attached to one another. Yes. Um, so there's a lot of overlapping pieces. And so what Jehan's going to do is wipe their finger like rub their finger over each of these overlapping pieces mm -hmm. and remind the wood of when it used to be small to try their goal is to kind of make a shield that can shrink so it's easier to carry around and then it'll grow when you need it mm. so that's kind of their thought process whether it's that or whether the wood kind of collapses together to make like a single piece that can be just like put on your arm and then it unfolds to make the full shield. Okay, I would like you to roll me persuasion. Convince the wood that it should do that. It's a good thing I got my plus four. That's 19. Very good. Um, you sort of ask the wood to do this and it does, uh, kind of smoothing some of the cracks along the way. Um, and you see it kind of shrink down even smaller than it is now to something that could fit in a pocket. Mm. And then with the armor, Jehan is going to kind of think about it, sit there for a moment, because they can't really do the same thing with armor because you don't really want it to shrink on you. <laughs> Wouldn't be helpful. Um, no. So instead, Jehan's going to try to convince it to protect itself in the sense of growing branches or thorns so that way it's more defensive or perhaps like um if someone hits it that they might get pricked by a thorn or something like that kind of like asking the wood to protect itself mm. in sense. yeah absolutely uh and a couple of like roses start popping up in places in the wood along with the stems with mm -hmm. these little tiny thorns kind of twisting around the armor mm -hmm. uh, and she takes a second looks up for what she's doing and says mm, yeah yeah i think that's good i, I did I'm, my best i put them both on the counter um, take a look at this and she hands you a, a chest plate that is made of a polished oyster shell, like the inside pattern, that swirling uh, pattern of white opal. Um, 
and a shield that is just the other half of the shell mm-hmm. um, with an armband attached on the inside. Um, these are specific to uh, defending against Pan, if that's indeed what you're doing. Really? Really. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, I didn't realize that you had specific defenses against Pan, but this must be really rare. Um, once it's all done, I'll bring it back to you in case you need it for someone else. Hopefully, that's kind of the, the point that's here. Kind of the point, yeah. I know. don't have to. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, take it and don't die, please. I will do my best. Very um, good. All right. Uh, also, um, I, Russ, forget the name. Uh, of the blacksmith in Neverland. But uh, Jehan would say, do you know the blacksmith in Neverland? Or use their name, which I, Russ, have forgotten. (laughs) There's a lot of uh, us have had gone there Mm -hmm. to try to, you know, get back the one who betrayed us all. Mm. Are they still there? Yeah, they actually made my staff. That's the person I traded with there. I look at that? Yeah, sure. And I hand over the staff. Oh. Well, that's a relief. Good. Here, uh, Take it. Uh, look, anybody one second and kind of like digs under um, take this and uh, hands you a, a vial of fairy dust. Oh. Okay. Well, if you succeed, then... uh... In case of emergency. Yeah. Okay. Um, And puts that in a pocket. Says, their hair's got really long. Um, It's like so, so long, it almost touches the floor. And they're also really, really nice. And they seemed really happy in the sense that they seem to have friends there. And I think they're happy. As happy as they can be. Uh, and they're happier uh, in general <laughs> than I am. Uh, but that's good. That's good. Wow. Uh, thanks. And uh, hopefully you'll get to see them soon. Yeah, I hope so. All right. I got to go catch up with everyone else because we're meeting Queen Mab soon. But <laughs> yeah. Right. Wow. Okay. Good luck with that for Thank sure. You. <laughs> all right um what's everybody else doing you finish shopping um <coughs> or you have more to to retrieve the um moon is high up in the sky now taking uh jahan's words to heart about being able to protect herself a little bit better um little miss i can't wear armor at all is going to be looking for any kind of like trinket or item that might boost her defense of herself. Um, sure. So uh, in looking, do you know specifically what you're looking for? There's so much to- uh, Yeah, to- like um, yeah. bracers of defense or a ring of protection or something along those lines. Absolutely. You could find uh, the ring. I would not say okay. there the bracers would be easily found. Um, and it looks sort of like uh, a, a ring of 
thorns, like branches and thorns that you find. What do you trade for it? Um, I'm going to trade the last shell that I have for that. Perfect. Uh, that's an easy trade made. Uh, and you get that ring. Excellent. Thank you. Arlie Riddance, are you satisfied with your shopping yeah. or anything else? Yes. I think Riddance would have just kind of like hung back and uh, with uh, Jahan while they took care of business. Oh, okay. I'll just follow along, I guess. Good. All yeah. right. Uh, so then after all of that, you reconnect uh, with each other as a full group again. Uh, the moon is right overhead. It is midnight and you see that the party down below you is in full swing. Uh, people are coming up and kissing the many rings on Queen Meb's hands. Um, she seems to be leaning down, kissing foreheads as well. Uh, people are coming back and uh, drinking, celebrating, eating, um, cheering occasionally. Uh, it looks to be that there are some people playing games. There are some people uh, playing music. There's a lot happening down here. Where's Tink? With you. Okay. Kind of hiding in her in herself a little, you know, kind of okay. making herself small. Uh, this is more of a Kate to DM question. I think we might've discussed this in my history, but what I know a little bit about Queen Mab, just kind of based on my mother's experience with the Feywild. Um, so you know that fairy courts exist wherever there are fairies. Okay. Um, you know that there is a queen in each one of these fairy courts um, and that they can be very different depending on what realm they are from, what element they possess. Uh, it seems the vibe you get here is very earthy. Everything is uh, earth, uh, vines, creatures, um, etc. And um, so far you've gotten kind feelings from a lot of the people here. So you get a general sense that uh, she probably is generally good in some way, uh, because if she was not, there would be a different feeling here. Yeah. Uh, but you don't know her specifically by name, but you also don't know Earth at all. Never heard of it. That's yeah. fair. Mm -hmm. uh, what I know, like general behaviors when it comes to the Fae, like you shouldn't say thank you, that kind of thing. Um, no, very, very much uh, like any royal court, okay. extremely cordial, professional, and... Sure. Adoration doesn't hurt. Valid. Flattery. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and you do see a Puck kind of arrive a little hurriedly at the queen's side, take a knee, uh, whisper something. And you see her lean in, come out, and kind of wave him off gently. And he uh, rushes up into the air, flying, uh, looking around. I think Puck's I, looking for us. I think so too. And I'll kind of like try and catch his eye and wave at him. Uh, yeah, he'll catch you, comes to greet you and says, well, um, are you about ready? Because, um, her Majesty would like to meet you right now. Uh, at this point, Jehan has put on the armor over their new outfit. Um, so the new outfit is kind of like a vest with long sleeve, like an undershirt with long sleeves and a skirt that goes down to like mid calf and traveler boots. Cool. Nice. Uh, and bright, shiny. Uh, mm -hmm. oyster shell over it. That's great. The armor looks good on you, Jahan. Yes. 
Thanks. Um, apparently it's meant specifically for fighting Pan. Oh, wow. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Come in handy? Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, we should... Everyone else ready? I think so. Look down at Riddens. You ready? I think so. Maybe I shouldn't be the first person to speak. Tessa or I, or I, or Jehan can handle it. Don't worry. I vote one of you two. What? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Riddens has a lot of sp- experience greeting, so I think that Riddens would probably be the best person to speak first. You're trying to pass this book. I mean, I'll, I mean, I'll do it if everybody wants me to. I'm just saying, like, you know, just in case. Riddens, why don't you and I do it together? How does that sound? That, that sounds awesome. That sounds like the best idea. Okay. All right. We'll do it together. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, and one last thing. Uh, I will take uh, this one, and he kind of grasps the arm of Tinkerbell and just says, just to soften the blow of Wait, this. wait, uh, before you <laughs> No her. harm comes to her. Nope, no harm that I will do, just gonna- No, no, no harm comes no to her. No harm. I understand that. You will have to make that argument to someone above my head. I would never. Will never. Uh, Jehan would have run up to Tink and be like, wait, before you go. Um, and they would like reach into a pocket in the skirt and pull out a little hair beret and hand it to them and say, I got this for you. She takes it. Um, uh, uh, is this a trick? No. I told you that once this was all done, we'd be friends. And so I get things for my friends when I can. And I don't have any money at home. But here, I can do a lot of stuff with fairy dust. And people seem to like that. So I made some things. Well, thanks. Um, I guess she kind of doesn't know what to do with it. Um, She just sticks it into her bun (laughs) and says, um, Look, I, you know what? I'll, 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 I'll tell you. I'll talk to you later. Thank you. For we'll that. get you when we're done all of this. Okay. Cool. Uh, and Jehan's gonna go up to the rest of the group and say, "Well, I guess I kind of tipped my hand uh, because I got stuff for everyone." What? Yeah. What? What? Yeah. Uh, and Jehan will. Once again, stick their hands into their pockets and pull out a few things. Um, For Tessa, it is a almost completely green uh, hair tie. Uh, And they hand it to you and say, just so your hair doesn't get in your face when you're casting spells, because that could be really bad. Um, it really especially could. when you're casting fire spells. Yeah, <laughs> and that's most of what I do. So mm-hmm. thank you. This mm-hmm. is this is gorgeous. Thank you, Jahan. Uh and Arlie for you. Um, and they would hand you a matching purple headband and say, uh, that's for your hair too, because it's yeah. really purple and pretty. And it matches your hair and it matches your new cute outfit. And yeah. You're very sweet. Thank you, Shehan. And then run over to Riddance. And what they do is they pull out a sort of plate made of wood with Riddance's name sparkling on it and hand it to them and say, look, a name tag. So that way everyone knows who you are. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you so much. This is the coolest thing ever that anybody's ever given to me ever. Sorry, Arlie, that the, the uh, amulet was really okay, cool. It's okay. This is also really, really cool. Um, and you you get you get a, a bardic inspiration from the excitement. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and then the last thing's for Emmy. And Jahan reaches into their pocket and goes up to Emmy and underneath the big eye places a leaf bow tie. Emmy spins and spins <laughs> and makes a little squeaking sound uh, and comes over and gives you a little lash kiss, a little lash flutter and kind of circles around your head excitedly and then takes her place right back uh, with the rest of the group. I didn't get anything for Sudsbury though because Sudsbury's perfect and doesn't need anything from what I can tell. They're already dressed up. And also a- I don't think they have hair in their face that's going to get them hurt. You are 100% correct. Okay. Fantastic. Sudsbury is perfect. <laughs> Sudsbury needs nothing. Sudsbury needs nothing. <laughs> well, right. Uh, if we're all quite finished, this was lovely. Uh, you all look very presentable. I feel very good about this. Very good. Um, and I should like to introduce you to Her Majesty. Of course. Uh, just one more moment. And recalling what we heard at the clothing shop regarding Emmy, I'm going to look at Emmy and say, Emmy, if you as a friend could do me a favor. Could you go with Tinkerbell and keep an eye on her, please? Or more than one eye. Or more than one eye. Just mm-hmm. make sure no mm-hmm. harm comes to her. Uh, diligently and excitedly, Emmy takes uh, her place at Tinkerbell's side. And um, Puck uh, I just links arms with her and says, well, welcome home, Tink. I should like to do the introductions myself uh, and kind of flies up with her and Emmy follows uh, and he kind of motions for you to follow along. Landing at the foot of this throne, um, The queen stands, uh, her dress kind of unmoving, so so elegant and so rigid as well, um, and heavy with jewels. She uh, kind of steps forward, does a slight little bow. Curtsy, deep curtsy. Mm -hmm. Deep bow. I should curtsy (laughs) with the skirt. Follow whatever RLE is doing. Rin says the same. <laughs> She's just looks at everybody. <laughs> okay. Uh, she sits. She says, Sir, uh, Puck, is it? Would you tell me what exactly, uh, who exactly our guests are today? Uh, kind of uh, nudges Tinkerbell to walk forward, who hardly does. Uh, And he says, well, uh, your majesty, I believe you probably recognize our old friend, Tink, Tinkerbell. She is back, it seems, but for placing any judgment, I would let you meet who she arrived with. Uh, These four, uh, well, five or six actually, uh, but these four in particular uh, seem to be the ones who uh, broke the curse that was on me. Sorry about that, by the way. Uh, And reopened our home and got us all back and out of hiding. Uh, I, I would introduce you uh, to the lovely uh, 
Jehan, Tessa, uh, Riddance, and Aurelie. Uh, great help to us in, in a, a very strange, dark time. They seem to have some sort of agreement. I believe they said the word contract with this one uh, to keep her alive uh, and safe for the time being. And it seems like they have a great plan, a plan to break the contract, Highness. And with that phrase, uh, she turns her gaze away from Tinkerbell and to you quizzically and says, would you attest to what he says? It is as he says, your majesty. Riddens repeats it verbatim. <laughs> it is as he says, your majesty. I love him. And how do you intend to break a fake contract? We need the original. We need to talk to the original pan and get the contract. Hmm. I suppose that could work. It's a bit rude. She has paid her debt. We made a promise not to call on her. As far as we know, she won't have to do anything other than provide us with the contract. Hmm. Perhaps. And I suppose you came here to find out where she is. Correct. Ridden steps up for a second. <laughs> Do, it. Do it. I'm so excited. <laughs> well, well, to be completely honest, we kind of thought she was already here and the contract was already here and that it was just going to be like really simple, but it's a little more complicated than that because you're here and you seem like you're very important. I'm gonna reach over and I'm gonna squeeze her into his hand. <laughs> yes, young man. I am very important. But should you accomplish something so great, so would you be. And frankly, you've already done us a great favor to which we will see you celebrated. However, you made a contract with this one. May I ask what the details of this contract are? I'm gonna have to remember what I said last week. Um... To give you the details of the contract would technically violate it because one of the things that we promised is no harm would come to Tink. If we give you the details of when the contract ends, harm could come immediately after as a direct result. Not bad. Still, it is worrisome to see non-fay engaging in fairy contracts so frivolously. This but was it's... anything but a frivolous, apologies. This was anything but a frivolous contract. We would not have made it if lives were not on the line. I understand that. Well, it seems that you did not do a terrible job as far as I can tell so far. However, uh, does your contract prevent us from questioning our young friend? It 
does not prevent you from questioning her. No harm of any sort may come to her. If she believes she is being done harm, then it is our job to prevent that from continuing. So with some caveats, you can question her if she is willing to answer them. And just to clarify, Miss, you know that she is in large part responsible for the evil you are attempting to valiantly undo. And the fact that she came back here at all shows that she's brave and willing to make up for her mistakes, contract or no. She leans back in her chair and thinks for a moment. Well, then I will withhold for the time being. But we will be watching this closely. Would expect nothing less. She turns to Tinkerbell directly and says, regardless of what comes, you will know the harm you've caused. She does. <sighs> She's been alone this entire time. Yes. Yes. I suppose that's true. And she might not say it because I think that she's working through a lot of things right now. But I think she is sorry. And I think she is willing to be good if she chooses to do so. And after all, you're a mighty and powerful queen. And what better gift or kindness can you show than mercy? Or a second chance? Everyone deserves a second chance. Can you make me a persuasion roll? Can I use my channel divinity? Yes. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> uh, so talking about channel divinity uh anuj has with the oath of redemption the ability to add a plus five to the persuasion checks for the next 10 minutes okay Holy crap uh so that is a 31 <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> nice okay um <laughs> You also have bardic inspiration if you want to chunk oh, that right Do up. it! Make it higher! Do it! Is it a it. d6? Yeah, it's a d6. <laughs> That's a 6, a 37. <laughs> she looks um, right at you, Jehan, and says, Well, I will consider that. Thank you. Now, uh, young ones, ladies, I do believe that however complicated your companion is, you are definitely to be celebrated. Puck informs me that two of you have been reunited with your Fae, and two of you have not. We have most of our numbers here, and I will assure you, there is very stands to attention as she does the crowd beneath you hushes, turns forward, uh, and she and she gives kind of a blown kiss of fairy dust to both Tessa and Arlie. Um, immediately 
that same golden wave of energy kind of flies out from each of you into the crowd, swirling over it and landing deep in the crowd. Sorry. Uh, and two uh, women step forward, kind of stunned, a little shocked, sort of dusting themselves off as well, fixing their hair <laughs> a little bit um, unexpectedly. And you can instantly tell immediately which one is yours. Well, go. I will go yeah. over and and hug mine. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Very good. Uh, as they do that, uh, the queen will turn to the two of you uh, and say, well, uh, please enjoy the rest of the party. Uh, I will give you and your whole team the location of the previous pen, but you will have to be very, very careful. Do um, you understand? Yes, your majesty. I think that we all understand. Before we head out, for the party and everything. Do you mind if I speak with you privately? Uh, you can see she has a couple of like fairy guards that stand beside her. She looks at them and gives a nod. They take a few steps back. Um, Puck kind of takes Tinkerbell a little bit away. Um, uh, Riddance, do you take that cue or? <laughs> I think I think Riddens doesn't at first and just kind of like looks at I both think, of them. Yeah, Jehan would look at you like very serious, like more serious than they've ever looked at you before and say, mm. Riddens, can I have like a few minutes, please? Oh, your majesty. And then does the same movement though, Jehan. And then, <laughs> and then, and then walks, just kind of like backs up until he thinks he's safe. I love I'll stick my I love him so much. I'll stick my hand out to Riddance while I'm yeah. chatting with my fairy. Sure. Uh all right. Before we go to Jehan's conversation with the Queen, uh Tessa, what is the first thing you say to Sarah when you see her? Um I give her a very big hug. And then ask do you know where she is i'm sorry no but that's okay yeah you don't you don't need that you have this yeah, I do. And I have you now. Yes. Yeah. And I just give her another very large hug. And what about Arlie? What does she do? What does she first say to Kate? Uh, gives her a big hug. And it's kind of like, I don't know what this means. Um, are you like a sister? Are you... <laughs> You're obviously family somehow, but I don't know how to qualify you. Uh, sister is a is not a, a too far off. I was made at the same time you were made by the same thought. Mom's gonna throw a fit. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She kind of ruffles the top of your head. 
Is she? I'm pretty tall. How tall is she? She's not as tall as you. Oh, okay. That's fair. That's a reach. Uh, I'm just going to give her a hug and and just be like, oh my gosh, I've always wanted a sibling and mom wouldn't say yes. And then I realized how siblings are made and I never thought I was going to get a sibling. I'm so excited. (laughs) (laughs) Me too. (laughs) Uh, And you both kind of go on in this conversation, Ridden's kind of tailing behind. Jehan, what do you say now in the privacy of Queen Mav? Your Majesty, I think I'm starting to understand fairy contracts in the sense of what's been going on um, and what I've heard. From what I know, and what I understand, Pan is a title. I assume that once that contract is broken, there must be a new Pan. Yes, that is true and part of my concern. Have you trained someone to become the new Pan? Is there someone? Oh, no. No. Um, It's not quite like that. You are... It's not so much a title as it is... a position, a job. Uh, It is something that you are made for. The one who does it cannot really be taught. They have to have it in them. And what does Pan do? What Pan is supposed to do is create uh, and to protect, but most importantly, to inspire and give hope to those who need it most, those who are scared and lonely embarking on a very singular journey. They need someone to create happiness and fun for them. And there isn't a fairy who's made for that. Not at this time, which is what worries me. I do hope that going to our last pen will not imply that she must take this mantle up again. That is, that would be breaking our promise to her. And while it was not a contract, we do take our promises seriously. And Jehan would look over the crowd at Tessa for a moment. Be like, yeah, promises are important. I will take on the title of the new pan. You? Why? Because I'm technically an adult now, and I know what it's like to be alone and scared, and I've had fun, even though it was really scary in Neverland for the past four days. And I've gotten good with the fairy magic that I have. And and I think that everyone deserves a chance to be good and to find their future. And yeah, I'm young. Maybe it'll be a temporary thing until you 
create the new pen. Or maybe it'll be a longer thing if that takes a long time, but I know that in this group, there's someone else who would volunteer and I can't let him volunteer. Why? Because, because he's just as lost as everyone else is, I think. Well. Because he would take this role to forget and to erase the past. And I don't, I feel like he needs to know his past to know what's going to happen. Well, it seems that uh, you all have quite good intentions. I will tell you this, when you obtain that contract, it needs more than just a volunteer. It has to be right. Try, if you will, to sign it. But it may not accept that signature. Okay. So we don't have to break it. Someone else just has to sign it. Yes. Okay. And with the memories, Pan doesn't have to forget. They chose to. That's not in the contract. Okay. You're doing all right. All yeah. of you. I mean, I don't know about everyone else. Um, I know that Tessa and Arlie gave each other a kiss on the forehead earlier, so I think that means that their dating is going well. Um, but I think I'm doing okay. I know that at first I really wanted to get home and see my dads, but something about this has given me faith, trust that they're okay, and that even if they're not, even if they really miss me, I can still get the item back to them, and that they can still be happy and that there might be people out there who need me more. I've only been here four days and things have changed a lot in Neverland. I've met all the different groups who live there. I've made friends, allies. I've flown. I've made a family in the sense of my friends. And of course, if Neverland is meant to be a place for people to come to and be safe, that means that if they wanted to visit, they could. That's all very noble. It is. I know, but it might not be right. And that's okay too. We'll see. For now, Let's hope you can find her in time. I think we should leave sooner rather than later. I agree wholeheartedly. Because I'm sure that Pan knows where she is. Yes, about that. Uh, we do not need a repeat of this last situation. Yes. I do not li like living underground. And I should not like to do it again. So, Why were you all down here? Why were you hiding? I don't under what happened. The last time a young one came so close at fixing things was a young Wendy. And she almost made it back. Ah, uh, but he got here first, and 
shut and lock the gates from the outside. So I don't know if we have time for the party. Well, we shall just because it's been too long. But when you are ready to leave, you come see me and I will tell you where to go. Okay. Um, and Anuj would bow deeply and say, thank you very much and head off the stage. Okay. You reconnect with your friends down below. Riddance kind of uh, tailing behind as dancing starts to pick up on the uh, on this dance floor. Uh, Arlie and Tessa's uh, fairies kind of give you each a little twirl as well uh, and kind of kiss love at you. Um, and what do you want to do? Um, Jehan. So <laughs> Riddance is going to run up to Jehan and be like, how did it go? I think it went well. Um, what, what, was, what, were they polite? They were were they polite. respectful of your question? Yeah, they didn't laugh at me because I was asking a weird question. They didn't tell me that I was silly. Um, yeah, they seemed really respectful about it. That's awesome. Is she like, is there, is there like a list or a queue? Like, is she just talking? Can she talk to everybody? Like, is she open to more? Can I say hi? I don't know. I think I'd probably ask Puck or one of the guards first instead of running onto the stage just because it seems like it might be rude to just run up. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be rude. Yeah. <laughs> Rins runs away. <laughs> I was kind of hoping he'd go talk to the queen. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, he has to talk to a guard first. That's yeah. True. Um, Puck is kind of walking over, so you can kind of intercept Puck if you'd like, or if you want to go to a guard, you can do that as well. Uh, maybe, I think this would go to a guard. Okay. Uh, Puck walks over to the rest of you and says, well, kind of, delightful news. I will apparently be guiding you through the streets of London. Isn't that lovely? What's what, London? What's London? That's London? where we are. <laughs> oh. uh, it's the okay. name of this place here. Uh, we like will... this place or this? This larger. The big one. Okay. Oh. Yes, yes. Um, we will uh, head out together when you're ready. So you let me know. Can't wait. She'll come with us. us. Yes. Um, uh, Riddens finds a guard. Uh, the guard kind of escorts you up to her majesty and says, ah, this one wanted to speak with you. Uh, I, I, Sir, and kind of backs <laughs> away. <laughs> May I speak with you, Your Majesty? Yes, dear. What may I do for you? Um, first, hello again. Hi. Thank you very much for your um, hospitality. Mm -hmm. Is that the right word, hospitality? It sure is. Okay, I've been practicing. So, um, I, you know, I didn't want to interrupt everything earlier because, you know, there was, it was very important and this is also very important, but I just wanted to ask you if you, do you keep the contract or does, do they, does, do we really have to go to the original pan to get that contract? Cause I don't want to bother her if, if she has a promise. Uh, I don't want to bother her either. However, as a security for her, the contract stays with her, as it does not just signify the contract between the current pen and Neverland. It signifies that her time is paid. And so she should have control over that to make sure that no one can take that from her. Oh, 
So did the second pan, the second pan didn't take it from her? Um, more like very, very cleverly tricked her. Oh. Oh. Do you know how? Unfortunately, not specifically. I just know that it involved a lot of our stolen magic. Hmm. Is she happy? I imagine she is. She always was. That's why she was chosen for this. She did an incredible job. You would have loved her Neverland. It was spectacular. I want to be polite. Um, should I call her Pan? No. No. That's a title that she is willingly and happily done with. She wanted to live out some normal years. Well, semi-normal. She keeps a little bit of the old magic. May I ask for her name? Her name is May May. May May. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Your Majesty. Very welcome. I sh I should. I have lots more I want to talk to you about, but I think that's more than fair. If you could ask her. I think she would like you. If I remember her well, which I think I do. I will. Should I say hi for you? Yes, send her much of our love. Okay. Thank you, your majesty. You're welcome. Please enjoy the party as much as you can, but Come see me when you're ready to leave. Okay, I will. Your Majesty. <laughs> <laughs> Ritten backs away and runs off. <laughs> all right. I think we will leave off with you all reconnecting at the center of this party and let you decide next week where you go from here. Um, I... I'm so excited to see how this goes. I would like you all to level to level four, please. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, and when we are officially out, we're going to be raiding Two-Headed Beholder as well. Um, I want... Oh, okay, good. Uh, thank you for everybody who followed and raided and talked in the chat and everything. Please come join us on Discord, support us on Patreon, and go check out our merch at sonerdware.com. Um, you can find both Welcome to the Party and Neverland merch there. Um, and... Chromatic Chimera. Yes, let's go yeah. check out Chromatic Chimera. Great, mm -hmm. wonderful. Let's give them a bangerang in the chat when we get there, just to let them know what's what. Uh, <laughs> and we'll see you next Saturday at 2 for the penultimate episode alright bye. Bye, bye everybody bye. you're the best hey bye.